Today's episode of the news is brought to you by Linode. Thanks, Linode. So there's a coupon below. You can get $100 off a new Linode subscription. They've got tutorials and guides and setup stuff. They host your server and your website and your shared objects and all this other kind of stuff. So if you're a web developer or looking to get into web development or you're looking for a career change where you're going to be able to work from home, you want to get into sysadmin or DevOps or anything like that, Linode's great to practice on. They're great to run in production. They cost less than Amazon and better service, in my opinion. We've used them for years. We use them for hosting for a level one, like where your level one website and some other stuff, forum. Uh, Linode's pretty good stuff. You can get 100 bucks off if you're a new subscriber. You can run through their tutorials, their guide. They're amassing a lot of documentation for open source projects, so you can build some really incredible things with open source and on the Linode platform. So you should definitely check it out. And thanks to Linode for sponsoring this episode. Hello, everybody. Today is Friday. It is February 26th. February is over. But today we're doing Robot and Nonsense. Woo! Woo! It's, uh, I think this is maybe one of the first really feel good stories America has had in 2021. Wouldn't you agree? I would yeah. agree. Yeah. At least we can all be happy about this one. NASA's Perseverance rover successfully lands on Mars. It survived the seven minutes of terror. And you could actually explore in 360. They had like a little 360 web page for it. It was a lot of fun. And that dropping it with that upper piece dangling it on cables and cutting them away and, and ditching itself and the really amazing thing here is where mars is right now what is it like 11 minutes yeah 11 minutes it only took seven to land so this thing had to do it purely on its own <laughs> yeah finally a good use of ai <laughs> machine learning and gpt and all that kind of stuff it's also uh the uh i guess this is also like uh, linux is used pretty heavily here with this setup with like the remote control and all the other stuff so finally linux has taken over the planet just not just planet. not our planet <laughs> I, I saw some good variations on the image in this article as well i saw one with like the doom guy in it and i was like oh it's pretty funny <laughs> our power power problems have been solved finally nice uh, BBC has uh, news about the computers rejecting your job application. This is very, very real. Most people don't realize that this is a thing. Like, these computers are... The algorithm is screening your job application. I like that this guy, though, he's a journalist, so he was applying for a journalist job, but he was taking all these little, like, IQ-type tests. So the AI could... Obviously, it couldn't figure out if he was a good journalist, but it just wanted to know if he was a quick thinker, I guess? How long until, like, you know, the Rupert Nerd Murdoch, uh, you know, Australian news machine, it's like you take those tests and it's like, oh, no, independent thought alarm. We can never hire this person. That's kind of terrifying to think about because, like, growing up when you were in school, it was always like, oh, I feel like I've just been trained to be able to answer the questions on the test. But when you get to the, everyone always says, when you get to the real world, you need to be able to think for yourself and think outside the box. But this sort of algorithm is showing us no, you just need to be able to fool the algorithm to get your interview. I constantly also, got the independent thought alarm growing up, so it's yeah. very bad. Also, do you think, like, what is the level of randomization here? Because it says 12 out of 16 complete. If they have 16 total and it's always the same 16, then the winning move is create a fake identity, apply for the job, go through the tests, learn what they expect of you, then do the real job application. We should sell that screenplay. It'll be like, uh, what's the the movie that could never be made now because uh, at Wokeness, where, where uh, Dan Aykroyd and um, uh, Trading Places, yeah, they would never, they would. Ne we need that, but it's the algorithm. That movie, but with the algorithm, where you apply for a job, it's like the person is definitely you're, capable of doing it, but they just they're not. The algorithm is like, no. You're describing Gattaca, <laughs> a popular sci-fi film, where that happens. I guess there's, that is kind of the plot of a lot of movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we HP. watch that every year in my bio biology classes in high school. I, do, I, don't, I, didn't, I wasn't able to read the entire story. There might be more to it. I hope there's more to it, but I did see a headline where almost exactly what you're describing. So this it was a black couple, and they were selling their house. Oh, I saw and, that, yeah. 
and they couldn't they were like why they're looking at all the houses around them and they're like this is crazy nobody's offered us any money for this house so they got their white friend to list the house and how much was it like 30 grand or 60 grand more yes yeah 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 they yeah. uh they, they, it wasn't just listing the house it was also like they played the owner and it was like let me introduce you to the owner and blah 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 and it was totally yeah. like it was completely indefensible it's just like wow racism that's that's amazing <sighs> it seems like real estate has a lot of racism <laughs> yes it does and sexism as it turns out i read a book that um well it's getting a little off topic but the a lot of the racism now is like systemic all the way back to like the 1950s and 60s because different people qualified like when we were in an economic slump um one of the fixes was home loans but the home loan thing was designed to be it was systematically racist racist so and that the economic implications of that carry through to today which is was well they would redline certain neighborhoods where it was like only certain people can live in this neighborhood and those people were almost always white yeah yeah and it was just it's like i had no idea that that was still a thing and my goodness what a mess um Space.com, HP Enterprise anyway. and Microsoft to launch AI capabilities to the space station with the Spaceborne Computer 2. It's a giant leap for cloud computing. I wanted a picture of this computer, but no. There's there's, there's this. It's like, oh, look, the HP Enterprise logo. Uh, this is not really that much compute. It's neat, but okay. But also, cloud computing from the space station? That seems like that's unnecessary data movement. Are they just using it all there, or are they moving that back down here as well? Edge compute. I don't know. The article makes it sound like uh, the new hotness in cloud computing is you get some server on site from HP Enterprise or Amazon or whoever, and it's just a little bit of server, and that's doing your edge compute, and that's doing some pre-processing or whatever to send it onto the cloud. And so the article is written to make it sound like that's what's happening, but like you, I'm skeptical that that's actually what's happening because edge computes use cases right now are kind of limited. In the future, it might be okay, but right now, kind of limited. But what is the transfer cost of data between the space station and the Earth? <laughs> Probably a lot. You can't afford it. Yeah. So that seems like an expensive cloud. That's the point. <laughs> You can't buy computers, pleb. You have to rent them. That's that's how Amazon makes money. I mean, have you priced Amazon S3 lately? <laughs> it's like, I can get a 12 terabyte hard drive for this much money. Or I can pay a hundred times that and store it on S3. Yeah. Uh, BBC News reports that Coca-Cola uh, is trialing its first paper bottle. It's a little misleading. The headline says it's paper. It's actually it's not, not paper. It's got a really thin lining of plastic on the inside. The problem is that you could nick it really easily or just bumping it on something mildly sharp would cause it to burst. But if you add a protective paper outer layer, it could work. I mean, they do the same thing with aluminum cans, right? That's not really that groundbreaking. Well, and they do this with milk cartons, which by the way, you can't, or at least in our area, you can't recycle like a paper milk thing because of the plastic on the inside. So this feels like <laughs> a feel good story that doesn't actually feel good because you can't actually recycle. But it's still gotta be better, right? Like the, the thickness of that plastic film is pretty low. The biodegradation is probably insanely accelerated. Uh, Maybe. The article also fails to mention that we've made some significant breakthroughs in plant-based plastics. So I think this combined with the plant-based plastics, we might be onto something, but the oil-based plastics, not so much. I mean, it's it's a good step in the right direction, but a, a company of Coca-Cola's caliber could put more money into this, <laughs> I would think, but. I'll have to get one here's, to try it. Here's the most important question that nobody's asking. Is paper going to keep my Coke as ice cold as aluminum does? It works for milk. I mean, I would say probably yes. Actually, I guess aluminum probably vents away temperature, right? Yeah, it's a super good thermal conductor. So paper actually might be better. Mm -hmm. Speaking of things that are worse but maybe better... Huawei has turned to pig farming as smartphone sales fall. They're looking at using technology to help pig farmers out and other industries, not just that. They So one of the things here that it can do is 
it can identify individual pigs. And if they don't put one of those neural net naming algorithms on that, then what are they doing? <laughs> it can also deal with mining coal and data from mining coal. Like that gets a little paragraph mentioned at the bottom and it's like, uh, okay. I, this confused me because it's my understanding that only terrorists mine coal. Don't Seems people like immediately it. die if you burn coal? <laughs> that was uh, from the carbon monoxide. Was that what was happening? Oh, that was the Australian shortage thing. I feel like a more clever person could have done a lead in to the whole the next story with the whole Chinese Australian coal thing angle. But Apple Daily reports an anti US Chinese professor found spending Lunar New Year holidays in Texas. I didn't really know what to take away from this article. So this guy, I, I don't, I'm not sure the thing that doesn't make any sense to me or that is not clear here is was it a secret that he was in the u.s only exposed because of the ice storm because he hates america but he was educated here and he owns a home here so i don't know one of his quotes is uh it was better to live in china with 2000 yun than live in america with 3000 us dollars which Juan. is a tenfold difference i think it's pronounced one Yun? Juan. Juan, I think, is the currency. I think. Someone will correct us and then we will not know. It's We have this discussion every time. <laughs> Maybe it's and just the Taiwanese time. people. I don't know. That's a different currency, right? Yeah. Either way, it is kind of hard to see his point, or not hard to see his point, when it's like you don't have power for a week because some ice but comes through. But here's the thing about it, you know, like he's he's one of these big online activists. It's like America is evil and we should hate them. And he's big in the Communist Party. So people were like, well, this is weird. Why is he living there? Why does he have that really nice house there? Yeah. And so the way they spun that is it like, no, no, he's suffering so that he can better report on the evil of America by living there. Oh, right. <laughs> I wonder if secretly he's like, oh my gosh, I'm free. But that's his that's his thing. He has to like post yeah. that online. So it's like, I'm suffering having to live here. I don't know. That just seems ridiculous. That seems like nonsense. maybe Maybe he's doing that for his extended family. <laughs> I feel like if I was the professor, I would have been like, wow, it's crap in China and it's crap in the US. Where will I hide? Uh, our next story, I don't know that I necessarily disagree with this. Japanese website maps neighborhoods that have noisy children. I totally, I would love that. I mean, that doesn't seem unreasonable. Yeah, the thing about children, and I don't understand how parents deal with this, but when they're having fun, it sounds like they're on fire. <laughs> you send them, no, the, the key to this is like, go play outside for a while. And then they can but, run around and scream and it's not as bad. But that's when I have to hear them. Well, have you that's when you are imposing that? your mistakes onto me. That's what the website is for, Krista. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm fine with that if someone wants to avoid, you know, hearing a bunch of loud kids. Also, yeah. unrelated, look at this little girl in the picture. The one, the short one on the far side. Look at her little face. Look how cute. <laughs> She's having a good time. Uh, I think they're all posing for the camera, and they all have different ideas of what pose for the camera means. That's what's so funny about kids. So cute. Obviously, I have a different perception of children than Ryan and Wendell. <laughs> yeah, this is great. The, but the thing about it is, uh, they also talk about gossip. And I'm not sure, how do you know how much gossip is going on in a given place? Isn't reporting people for gossiping also kind of gossiping? Uh, I feel like if you did that on a map anywhere in the South, it, like the whole map would just be... Brightly colored. <laughs> we need like a map you were just for... telling us gossip about your neighbors, Ryan. <laughs> we need a map for uh, car non-functional cars in yard. Oh yeah, or dogs barking. <laughs> oh, the dogs barking map. That yeah. would be amazing. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. So there's a dog that barks nonstop around the clock where I live, and since the ice storm, I haven't heard him at all. Oh. <laughs> Uh, he, it's one of those situations where they just have him chained up outside which if you have a dog that's just chained up outside you're a monster and I don't like dogs 
But it's just a horrible way to, to deal with Why a dog. Why get one if you're not going to ever, like, let it run free or, like, be in the house with you? Or... So Maybe they either... brought it inside because it's been cold. Well, there's two two possibilities, right? Either they brought it inside or they didn't. Oh. Either way, it stopped barking. Sad. <laughs> Once again, we immediately go to the darkest place possible. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of which, Metopia gets an 18 plus rating in Russia due to same sex relationships. Nothing is depicted here. This is from Nintendo. Like Nintendo is like the most uh, milk toast thing ever, and it's got an 18 plus rating in Russia. Wow. Yeah, although I don't think there's any sort of sexual connotation. It's just like a Facebook, like I'm in a relationship type of thing. I think. Yeah. That's incredible. You know what else is incredible? But this guy was reunited with his prized chicken. Mississippi man re reunited with Rooster after losing him at an Alabama Cracker Barrel. There's I no love, story here. It's yeah, all I love video. this headline, and they didn't tell me anything. Oh, you know what? I had JavaScript turned off. I didn't even see the video. Oh. Yeah, the video doesn't explain anything. So the text is like, watch the video to learn how they were reunited. They don't say. It seems like somebody stole the chicken and was like, oh, oops, here, have your chicken back. So they didn't make a big deal about it. But yeah, that was messed well, up. Somehow was the Cracker chicken Barrel just a meetup spot. No, this guy was traveling. Oh, you know how there's a Cracker Barrel like every two yeah, feet from it. every exit. So the chicken was in the cab of the truck, and when he came back out, it was gone, and he had no idea how. And it, I mean, like and what the, it art says, the article in the video doesn't explain how, just that they've been reunited because the entire town was like, "Let's find that chicken." How does the a NPCs chicken get out of a truck? If it's just in the back of a truck bed, it could just hop up and walk out. No, I think it was in the in the cab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh that's a better question. Yeah. It was either in a cab or it was in the cat carrier that was in the video. So, Well, how does a chicken get out of a cat carrier? <laughs> None of this makes sense. Somebody was like, oh my so gosh, let me free you from your oppressor. <laughs> Or someone in the kitchen at Cracker Barrel was like, we're running out of chicken, quick. <laughs> no, they were reunited. It, 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 it was, that was good, at least. Only because the, there's some sort of animated movie here where the chicken almost gets roasted, but he gets out in time. <laughs> Do you think that guy would have known if they just got him a similarly colored chicken and yes. brought it to him? Yes, he absolutely would have known. Think so? <laughs> yeah. Someone who's traveling with a chicken and a cat carrier, yeah, probably. Yeah, maybe. Now, our next story you would think is a tech story, but it's actually in the nonsense section. House Republicans propose nationwide ban on municipal broadband networks. The GOP claims the ban would promote competition by limiting government-run networks. That uh, sentence right there. You've pinpointed why it's in the nonsense section. <laughs> uh, so, uh, does anybody want to remind me how things are going with Frontier and, like, West Virginia again? Or Comcast. <laughs> All those stories we just did in the previous episodes. Yeah, this was ridiculous. And I, I do agree that we could get into a place where municipal broadband could be one of those situations where it's like, wait a minute, they're blocking URLs or they're limiting what we can say and government has become a part of this. But that's already happening. <laughs> yeah. Well, so what do we have to lose? The original vision for the municipal thing was just the connection. So like you would have fiber from your house to whatever the big city was in your region. And then there would be different providers in the big city that are only in the big city that carry your traffic to the internet or carry your traffic to Netflix or carry your traffic to wherever. But you've got that fiber optic connection from your house all the way back to a central point at which there's competition. That would work, that would be good. But it doesn't make sense for 17 different companies to run 17 different strands of fiber to your house because we can't even afford to run one piece of fiber to your house. But having that kind of competition would be good. But that's not what this is. But I, even with that, there's there are problems down the road where these municipalities get into sweetheart deals, like the buildings in New York. Where <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I want this other carrier. And they're like, well, we signed a contract. I, and that that's definitely something that would be a problem. Yeah. But right now, we already have exactly the same problem phrased a little differently. Yeah. What do we have to lose? Yeah, the whole like, like uh, the franchise agreement thing. We already have that with cable TV. Like, there cannot be competing cable TV providers, 
And that means there cannot be competing providers to provide internet service over a coaxial line, which is ridiculous. Uh, but we literally already have those kinds of agreements. It's just that you can also get internet from other kinds of connections. It's kind of a loophole. They tried to preemptively close the loophole, but it didn't, it didn't really work out. But yeah, it's, it, this is just, we need somebody that's not completely dishonest and in the pocket of the telecom companies to, to work this out because this is, we spent as taxpayers, we spent so much money and our infrastructure is so terrible. I think we need less people in government trying to figure this out and more people in government just leaving it alone. Yeah. That seems like I mean, not leaving it alone in the, the shape that it's in right now, tearing down all of the horrible things that they built <laughs> before that's led to this. <laughs> Make it easier. Like somebody wants to come to town and give you gigabit, you know, network. Uh, not like what we've seen with Google Fiber, where Google Fiber is like, we want to provide Internet to everybody. And it's like, we're going to make those hurdles so high that you can't cl- you can't possibly climb them. It's like, OK. It's a mess. Speaking but at the which, same time, if you were to, you know, strip away all that stuff and be like, yeah, do whatever you want on the poll, Comcast would destroy every line on that <laughs> poll within two months. Remember those Verizon stories where literally that was happening with Verizon, like the Verizon Fios? People were coming and they were like, we're going to destroy your coax connection so nobody can come in here behind us in case the fiber doesn't work out. Those were amazing. Speaking of things that are you know, really insane. Alaska woman using outhouse attacked by bear from below. I don't know how a bear would be in an outhouse below, but, uh, she got, she got nibbled. She did need, uh, you know, a first aid kit, but there was nothing really terrible, but, uh, yeah, the bear, I guess she got swatted from below. I don't know. Couldn't tell if it was a bite or a claw. It was enough to bring blood, but apparently they don't use this. There there was a yurt that they were hanging out in. (laughs) They don't use it very often, and they hadn't been there since the winter, so they assumed that he was hibernating there. Well, I guess that would make sense. It would be warm in that outhouse. Protection from the elements? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, it's there's something up there. And then, you know, as you do, you just take a bite. <laughs> that does have to be really terrifying. Although she said she thought it was like a rat or something at first, and she wasn't too concerned. And then she saw the bear face. <laughs> it was like, are you pooping on me? <laughs> Miss, what are you doing? This is my house. <laughs> the BBC has our next article. China promotes education to drive. Uh, uh, China is promoting an education drive to make boys more, quote unquote, manly. So they've got this amazing picture here. I guess what they're wanting is for it to be less like the picture there. The TF boys are wildly popular, but media ask if they are good role models. Narrator, they were not. And I like how most of the comments that they pointed out, now this is BBC, so they're probably cherry picking the most woke garbage. But a lot of people were like, no, no, let them be feminine. We need that. Okay. Uh, Apparently Jinping loves football. Hmm. All I can think of is, uh, you know, let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. The song from Mulan. They need a Li Shang to whip their boys into shape. <laughs> Wouldn't that be He wasn't right. in the new one. He wasn't in the new one. They should have had him in the new one. I don't, uh, I mean, I guess it's weird. I don't know. Because uh, uh, the first thing that I saw on the internet, I can remember, that was kind of a meme, was like the Yata thing. That was Japanese, though, I think. Um, yeah it's japanese and so like they were, and it was like this is very weird this is very popular in japan and it's like yeah okay that's so. what it means like i accomplished something and then people kind of made it a meme over there they certainly did i don't know uh, our our next headline i'm going to paraphrase a little bit uh cop according to the cops man sent uh naughty images to underage girls so they blackmailed him for the use of his van <laughs> So he was talking to underage girls online. He knew that. He sent them pictures that he should not have. And they threatened to turn him in if he didn't let them use his van. Which he did. And then the police were like, why are you letting 14-year-olds drive this van around? And uh, he said, well, here's why. And so they they arrested him. So he... 
he, he really played himself there because he really just got caught on two things now instead of just the one. Well, he called the cops and the, I think they, an investigator called him back or something. He was like, oh, no, actually, you know what? I don't need that anymore. It's okay. <laughs> but they came and they were like, well, that's weird. Why would you do that? And then he spilled everything. Now he's in jail. Uh, uh okay <laughs> neat <laughs> pro predator tip <laughs> <laughs> don't be a predator <laughs> uh, now i tried to find more information about our next story the headline it's too is, good to be true right yeah minnesota business selling self-cleaning underwear and so i'm pretty sure you remember that what was that the stuff from the 70s it wasn't polyester but it was that stuff where it was just like it was like a plastic um i think that's what this is i think the underwear is made out of this this stuff now they do have antimicrobial underwear christy you probably have seen that with your camping stuff right yeah yeah You've, you'll see like antimicrobial or you'll see a like wool blend underwear that's supposed to like keep smell down but the phrase self-cleaning, I feel, is very misleading here because yeah. it's just that they don't stink. All of the, nasty. the yeah, all the crust and nastiness that comes out of your lower body is still going to be in there. It's just going to contain the smell. <laughs> they say it fights bacteria, stays cool, stays dry, soft, durable, and blocks UV waves. Is that something people are concerned about in their underwear? <laughs> you know, I don't want to. They call it. Out there. They call it where the sun don't shine for a reason. And I think this is also the same material they make like bed sheets out of. So they're like, you don't have to change your bed sheets for a month. Mm. Mm. That makes a little bit more sense. But again, there are things going on in the bed sometimes. <laughs> and you just don't want that residue hanging out, even if it doesn't stink. That funk. <laughs> Speaking of the time of that funk, Steve Jobs' uh, job application valued at $175,000 heads to auction. So this is a job application from Steve Jobs when he was still in college in 1975. And uh, it's, it's just one page, you know, filled out in handwriting by Steve Jobs. It's like, do you have access to transportation? Possible, but not probable. This is so disgusting. This makes me just weep for humanity. <laughs> Who pays for this? Idiots. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the this isn't the story that makes me weep for humanity this week. I, that's the one of the later stories, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but this, this is a rare feel good story. Yeah, the this next is one. Yeah, dog cool. sucked out into uh, out of home in tornado, but returns hours later. That's impressive. And it's one of those little, you know, like barely yeah. a dog, yeah. basically a large cat. <laughs> it it had the ride of its life. And it's she okay. said that it was. Like it, she was cuddling with it in bed, and as she scrambled out of bed to escape the tornado and get to her son, I think she threw the covers over the dog. Mm. Which, the dog was like, the, "Oh, okay, we cuddling." And then the whole bundle was sucked out by the tornado. But I guess maybe there was enough padding that it didn't get damaged. Wow! Every Impressive. time that like there's a thunderstorm, that dog's gonna be freaked out. Also, the only reason she woke up is because of the dog. Oh. dog the dog saved her life. And that's <laughs> the dog's just thinking, it's like, why did you do that? I was trying to save your life. <laughs> I'm amazed that people don't wake up during big storms or like, you know, they'll push out like tornado warning and then you'll hear it on your phone. Like my husband does not hear those alerts ever. You like, know, I was reading about, that? I was reading about a, uh, somebody here that died of hypothermia during the yeah. ice and I was like, wow, wouldn't you wake up? Wouldn't you get, because cold will wake you up. Yeah. Wouldn't you get cold enough that you would just wake up? And then I read further down in the story and they were like, that family is asking that you send any, instead of sending flowers, send donations to like heroin recovery. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Well, the, there was another, me. there were two hypothermia, I think two or three hypothermia cases and two of them were elderly people. Yeah. That makes more sense. There so, some, you know. There's already a ton of really sad stories like that out of Texas, like people losing power to their oxygen machine. So they, but then they, they've got portable oxygen like in their car and then they freeze to death in their car. And that's just, a lot of people went and just started up the car in the garage and went back to bed and died. Yeah. Yeah. 
I don't, but also a lot of people had those, uh, you know, because Texas, a lot of people had those hybrid F-150s. And apparently that could keep your HVAC going for a little while. Mm. Yeah, I saw that. I think uh, one of the automakers was telling people, like, loan those out to people who asked for them. You mean like the dealerships would loan them out? Yeah, the dealerships were doing that. I guarantee they didn't do that. I think I read that somewhere. They made no, that as saying, like a feel good story. Well, I can see. No, I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. The automaker certainly said that. I'm saying the dealers would not do it. Oh, yeah. Because car dealers are just, you know, they're barely human. That's true. <laughs> Speaking of barely human, or maybe not, I don't know. This, this is, again, not the story that makes me lose faith in humanity, but... Uh, Twitch streamer made $16,000 filming himself sleeping and letting viewers disturb him with alarm clocks and fake dog barks. Genius. That's, that's I genius. That. Yeah. But, a, I probably wouldn't do it every day in a row, but I'd do it every other day. <laughs> Certainly yeah. on, like, on like day three, you start to lose, uh, start to lose uh, brain function. But he's not streaming around the clock, so you can just catch up with some naps. Yeah, that's true. Also, it looks like he's got a dog or a cat there with him. That's not fair to subject the pet to that. <laughs> <laughs> that is basically torture. But, you know, I wonder if he knew this was coming. I mean, he had to. I imagine they'd done this before. But he had the text-to-speech turned on. But they used the text-to-speech to trigger Alexa and get real creative. Oh. <laughs> like we do on the news sometimes when we order gummy bears for our loyal viewers. Well, uh, Alexa... Play Devil Went Down to Georgia. Repeat. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> the New York Times has our next story. Meet Elizabeth Ann, the first cloned black-footed ferret. So we were up to cloning ferrets. We were cloning sheep. Well, that was almost 20 years ago now. I was uh, a kid when that story was announced. So yeah, it's been like 20 years ago. And now we're cloning ferrets. I don't know why we need to, but this one's yeah. uh, ferrets are adorable. I understand that they stink. A friend of mine had them, like the other thing too with them is I find that they're kind of oily. So like you pet them and then it feels like you need to go like wash your hands immediately. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, they're cute, but wouldn't have one as a pet personally. <laughs> My Fox 8 has the strangest, completely uncorroborated headline ever that they might be just doing for clicks. It's like, uh, no, no, this is real. This is real. I read the, uh, the official document on this. Wow. Uh, some move to change breast milk to chest or human milk in order and effort to be more inclusive. I think it was a European Union medical body that first published this. But don't men technically have breasts as well? I, I don't know. Is that... Like they would call it the same... Like men can get breast cancer. They don't call it chest cancer. That's for men. true. Now that's a good point. I think we should... I, we've already... Like, none of those names. Here's the name. Tendy milk. Oh, what? <laughs> I, don't, humans, I don't think humans have a tenderloin, do we? I don't think so. No, I do no. kind of like human milk as well, though, because it sounds very strange. Chicken Anybody? tendies or chicken breast strips, right? Say what? Chicken tendies or chicken breast strips, right? No, no. The tenderloin is a specific part of the breast. Oh, okay. But uh, if you are in the medical community or you know in medical school or whatever do humans have a tenderloin <laughs> attending if you will uh, protocol reports that alphabet wants you to eat balloons instead of dieting don't do this Bloop. there's the there's the diagram you'll have to imagine what happens and then it then it deflates and then you pass it normally but okay so let's imagine that you go through step one and step two, but you're on a bus and step three starts. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go potty really bad. I mean, you might not have to go potty, but there's some good to be some gas. Yeah. Or a lot of gas. What if you live in a house with a septic system? What are the, where do the balloons go? I imagine the, I think what happens is the balloons are fairly biodegradable and step three happens automatically because some part of them breaks down in your stomach. Ooh. There's also some other interesting stuff in this article, like your preferences and or your shopping preferences and just stuff that Alphabet is patenting, basically. Also think about like you go to wipe, but the balloon is still half in and half out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would be better or worse than finding a tapeworm. 
Uh, Probably again, similar. That would be yeah. better because the tapeworm is technically kind of alive, which would be <laughs> terrifying to pull out. Yeah, I guess the tapeworm is, is like, oh, I've, I have something that I'm going to need some external help with versus the balloon, which is this is the consequences of my actions. Now, here is uh, if you want, you know, darkness. I don't know how many people have considered this. I guarantee Alphabet has not. But how does this play out in like TSA? Oh, <laughs> yeah. You get on a plane and they're like, uh, we think you have a balloon in your gut. You know, if you're if you're in line in the TSA and you just you went through the body scanner and you realize like, oh crap, I put my balloon in earlier, and you see somebody approaching you with gloves, Ooh. you're about to have a bad time. Speaking of uh, having a bad time, an army of parasitic wasps has been deployed to battle moths inside a British stately home. So there's this mansion apparently has a moth problem. They're probably living between the uh, the plaster and the brick. And uh, parasitic wasps are the thing that you need for that. So I feel like that this is something, something going to end with the spider and the fly. It's like, why did they, I guess she'll die. I don't know. I forget how that goes. Well, apparently what happens, and if you remember, we did our own parasitic wasp research when we had our aphid problem in the studio. Yeah. But uh, when there, when there's no more eggs for them to take over, they just die out because there's nothing for them to do. And they're so small they basically just become dust. Apparently that mansion is where Anne Boleyn was born. Now it's probably just, you know, owned by the monarchy and sits empty all the time. Hence the moths. Oh, I bet it's, the heating bill's unreal. Uh, it's probably just not even heated, right? I don't know that anybody's in there. Got to keep it at least a little bit heated. Otherwise it'll succumb to the elements. Maybe. It looks nice. I would live there, maybe. You need a staff. <laughs> Somebody to keep you company? I don't know. Uh, I had a lead-in for this, but I've forgotten what it was. So, Screenshot Media has, Period care companies are to blame for Mexico City's tampon shortage, not its government. Since the beginning of 2021, as reported by the Financial Times, Mexican Capital has decided to ban the sale of menstrual products until its plastic applicators are replaced with more environmentally friendly materials. Uh. I mean, I I get the what they're trying to do, but like sometimes you can't use an alternative. What do you think about that stock art? This is a melting popsicle. I love this. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> it's graphic without yeah. being actually graphic. But you immediately know. Yeah. What they're getting at here. So this is the mayor's brilliant idea, who is a climate change scientist, of course. And uh, they did report it back in 2019. But the people here are like, well, it's not the mayor's fault. Why didn't the companies change everything about their manufacturing process for this one city? <laughs> well, I mean, there are alternatives. So, like, you can do a cardboard applicator, which hurts like hell. I don't recommend it. Or you can get ones without applicators, which kind of work but aren't great or you can do like a menstrual cup but again it's such a personal thing that like sometimes you just need one with a plastic applicator that it feels like it kind of sucks if you're a woman who needs that to manage your period yeah and it's the kind of thing where i don't think people want to spend a lot of time dealing with it or thinking about it right you're just trying to get through the current crisis <laughs> and get on with your day. It's about making better choices. Why don't we use some of that plant-based plastic in these? I don't well, know. We're working on it. The, the yeah, thing, I would be open to that. The thing right now, the problem is that oil is really cheap, but plant-based plastics, uh, the plants that it's made from actually grow pretty quick. So if we can switch over enough agriculture to do that, that should put a cap on oil prices for plastic as far as that goes and because then it'll just be like oh we'll just make it out of this other kind of plastic it can be a little bit more fiddly and a little bit more like it'll warp under different temperatures and stuff but for this kind of thing it would be perfect meanwhile if you live in mexico city my advice to you is uh cross the border load up on this and go door to door <laughs> do they uh, did the article mention if they banned pads no, I think it's just the plastic applicators that they care about. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense, though, because pads also have, like, the sticky plastic backing. 
do I do I misremember that part of the reason is like this is showing up in like their sewer system or something, or am I misremembering? I haven't heard that. If that's the case, but for this you don't the applicator you don't flush, right? You, you just throw that away. You throw that in the trash, yeah. Yeah, you're not supposed to flush anything, but as we learned from the great sewer debacle here, you know, people also flush flushable wipes, which are not actually flushable. Yeah. No, I don't think it's anything like that. I think it's just they don't want plastic in these. Yeah. I, well, that's that's what I don't understand because, like, there are other period products that use plastic, like pads, and it's like, why aren't those banned as well? If that's <laughs> the case. Because you can, it's really easy to use reusable pads. Like, I use reusable pads, but. This paragraph is great. One chemist at the Capitol laid out the official ruling we're not allowed to display tampons before quietly offering to sell some under the counter. <laughs> <laughs> You have to ask for them. Oh, okay. That makes sense. You got to lift your dress up and prove. <laughs> You're on the rag. That's, uh, that's messed up. Like another, thanks for bearing with us through the, uh, the, the frozen episodes of the level one news. I guess we'll be hopefully back to normal. We'll see you next week. Oh, yeah. we should, we should say, actually it's pointless to say, right? Because this, well, no, no, it'll be Friday morning. Yeah. Next Friday, we're going to do a uh, live news. Yes. So wait, that's today wait, from your that's point of today. view. Yeah. So tune in later for our live news. Woohoo! Which won't have Engage. a lot of stories because it's been real dry lately, which is what part of why we're doing it. Well, we might have some flooding stories after all the, our ice melt goes away. So. Well, there, and there also might be a big glut of tech stories now that the news doesn't have to be about ice. Well, but right. also think about how many tech companies are in Texas that have shut down so yeah they all moved there because they're like oh there's no like taxes and stuff and then it's like oh the electrical grid's also independent <laughs> yeah well all those californians i bet they're loving life <laughs> yeah how great because a lot of those people left california because of the pg and e stuff they're like right this is crazy they turn it off our power i won't stand for this i'll go to texas <laughs> they've if privatized anything, their grid that's going to be a lot better <laughs> it just seems like you shouldn't trust the grid is the only lesson I've learned from watching all this this week and wonder, from having my own power turn off for a little I, while. I wonder if Elon Musk is sitting back like, yes, it was a, it was the right move to move the factory to, to Texas because now everybody's going to buy a power wall. Or just an electric car because it offers you that backup. Are his companies hooked up to the grid, though, like his office buildings and stuff? He may be screwed as everyone else. He tweeted a picture of the one of the buildings in, in Texas. It looked like it was operational. Maybe he uses his own stuff then. Well, we'll see you next week, everybody. Or later today, as a matter of fact. One of the two. Both. Well, shortly. I don't know. We'll see you at some point in the near future. There either on the stream or on the news. Thank you. Until then. Bye. Yeah.